Hey everyone, this video is for 8.3 multiplying polynomials, specifically binomials. Uh, remember, binomials just means two terms. So our goals are that we can multiply two binomials together or a binomial and a trinomial. I'm going to show you three different methods and basically after looking at all three methods, you can use which one works best for you. So let's take a look at the area model. This picture shows you that you're multiplying 2x plus 1 and x plus 2, and then basically you just combine like terms and get the answer. Option 2, use the distributive property. I'll show you what that looks like. And option 3, use a table. Make sure you fill in area and distributive. Those are a couple of the blanks. Okay, example 1. Use the distributive property to make a simpler form of 2x plus 4 times 3x minus 7. First step, rewrite it. Now, we are used to distributing one term to both terms inside the parentheses. This time we're going to distribute twice. So the first thing that I'm going to do is distribute the 2x to the 3x as well as to the 7. So I'm going to write that right here. 2x times 3x minus 7. This will make it easier for you. Then what we're going to do is distribute the 4 to both terms. So 4 times 3x minus 7. So basically we're going to be distributing twice. Now we're going to be multiplying. So we have 2x times 3x, that is 6x squared. And 2x times negative 7 is negative 14x. Now share the 4 with the 3x, that's going to be plus 12x. And share the 4 with the negative 7, that's going to be negative 28 when you multiply. Now you can see that these two terms are like terms, so we want to combine them. The first term stays the same. The middle term becomes a negative 2x because negative 14x plus 12x is negative 2x. And the minus 28 comes down. And that is our simpler form of the original problem. So method one, um, this is actually option two written above, but anyways, here's the distributive property shown to you. Now I'm going to show you the table method. And from last year's experience, this was the method that most people preferred. So I will be leaning towards this way because I think it is easier for you guys to understand. First thing that you want to do, this table is made for you. In the, in the future, you're going to have to make the table by yourselves, but I, I know you can do that. So take the negative, let's see, x minus 3. Take the x, put it there. Take the negative 3, put it there. I'm t going like this, x minus 3. Now take the 4x, put it up top, and take the negative 5 and put it right here. So I'm just rewriting the terms. This top left box is always going to be left blank. Now, but basically what you have to do is just multiply. So x times 4x is 4x squared. So we're, we're going like this in case you're lost. x times 4x is 4x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. And now negative 3 times 4x is going to be negative 12x. And negative 3 times negative 5 is going to be positive 15. So this is just like the multiplication table that you learned back in like third grade. Um, you're just matching up the row and the column to multiply. Now in this table method, you're going to be seeing that we're going to have some like terms. So what I want you to do is write down the stuff that we just found. So 4x squared, um, negative 5x, negative 12x, and 15. Just rewrite that. Now the middle terms are like terms, so definitely combine them. We're going to get negative 17x, and the first term and the last term come down. And that's typically how it's going to be. The first term and the last term come down, and the middle two terms combine. So the product is 4x squared minus 17x plus 15. Okay, now let's take a look at the area model, which is technically option one on the first page. It's also called the FOIL method. So in the top right box on your note sheet, fill in FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. And I actually introduced this to most of you when we were getting ready for the park test. 
So now I'm going to show you what we're, what's happening here. Um, 2x plus 2 times x plus 3. What's going to happen is we're multiplying the first terms. So those would be 2x and x. Then I'm following the FOIL method. We just did the first terms. Outer terms. Outer means outside. So these guys right here are the outer terms. So I'm going to have 2x and 3 multiplying. Now I stands for inner. 2x. 2 and the x are the inner terms. So we're going to have 2 times x. And lastly, the last terms are 2 and 3. 2 times 3. Now we just need to multiply. So 2x times x is 2x to the second. 2x times 3 is 6x. 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times 3 is 6. Like I mentioned in the past, these guys are like terms. The outside terms come down and the inside terms combine to get 8x. So the answer is 2x squared plus 8x plus 6. So now the area model has been shown to you and it's also called the FOIL model. In example 3 we're going to do this once again so you can see it in action with different numbers. Using FOIL, what is a simpler form of 5x minus 3 times 2x plus 1? So let's talk about this first. First terms are 5x and 2x, so we're multiplying them. Once you get the hang of it, you can skip this middle step, but I definitely want you to write this down right now. Outer comes next, these guys. So we have plus 5x times 1, inner, negative 3 and 2x, and last, negative 3 and 1. Now we just need to multiply. So 5x times 2x is 10x squared. 5x times 1 is 5x. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. And negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Like last time, these guys are like terms. Bring down the outside two terms. And we're going to get negative 1x or just negative x in the middle. So our simpler form is 10x squared minus x minus 3. Okay, example four. Here's an application problem. What is the area of this rectangle if we know that the length is 2x plus 1 and we know that the width is 5x minus 2? So a couple things you can do. Um, you could use the FOIL method, you could use the distributive property, or you could use the table method. And I think what's preferable for most people is the table method, so I'm going to show this to you. So just take the terms that were given and make a table. And just write the values on the outside. So we can do 2x and 1 there, and 5x and negative 2. Hopefully you're seeing that this is just coming down. And we are multiplying because to find the area of a rectangle, as you can see right here, it is length times width. So now let's multiply. 5x times 2x is 10x squared. And next, 5x times 1 is 5x. And negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. In the table method, these values should always be like terms if you're following the correct procedure. So now let's write this again without the table. And then let's combine like terms. Sorry about that. It's not cooperating. Okay. When we combine the 5x and the negative 4x, we get positive 1x. And you can put the 1 there if you want it or not. So 10x squared plus x minus 2. Oh, goodness. Ten x squared plus x minus two is the area of this rectangle. And of course, if we were given a value for x, we would take that number and plug it in and just do our operations. All right, we're almost done. So far today, we have only multiplied 
binomials by binomials. Now we're going to take a look at a binomial and a trinomial. So that means a value with two terms and a value with three terms. So now the FOIL method is only helpful when you multiply two binomials, not when you multiply a trinomial and a binomial. So what we're going to do is we can either use the distributive property using the vertical method or we can just use the table method. Now my experience with last year's people was that um, people preferred the table method. So let's write that. Use the table method. It is preferable. And this time the table is going to be um, 2 by 3 dimensions, not just 2 by 2 because we have more values. So I'm going to take the 2x and the minus 7, taking that value, rewriting it, and then 3x squared, x, and minus 5. Just took the trinomial and rewrote it. Now we're always going to be multiplying, so we have 2x times 3x squared. That's going to give us 6x to the third. That 3 is coming from the little 1 and the 2 in the exponent spot. Now let's keep going across to the first row. 2x times x is 2x squared. And 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. Now let's do the second row. Negative 7 times 3x squared is negative 21x squared. Negative 7 times x is negative 7x. And negative 7 times negative 5 is positive 35. Now using the table method, the diagonals should be like terms. And it turns out that they are, which is awesome. So what I suggest you do is write the first term and then combine the first diagonal. So I guess I'll just put them next to each other so you see what's happening. And then we'll do the answer in the next step. So I just rewrote everything in the boxes. The first term stays the same. The next term becomes a negative 19x squared because that's what happens when you multiply or actually add a negative 21 and a 2. And then next we have negative 17x. Negative 7 plus a negative 10 is a negative 17. And the positive 35 comes down. There are no like terms, so therefore this is the answer. And that was pretty, pretty pain-free. So thanks for sticking with me in this lesson. We just finished section 8.3. Feel free to try this lesson check for this section. Um, if not, if you're not comfortable yet, you can try the lesson check for the previous section, and I'll see you soon.